online. Um, so we wanted to start off first with some introductions because we have some guests. And so I guess we'll start with the committee members and then um, ask guests to introduce yourself. John? John Bailey. Um, Rick Bankwell. We have Keith Amber. Yvette Meunier, I'm the chair. Dick Watley. Um, I'm Sky Slotty. I'm the planning director. I chair this committee. I'm not chair, please, this committee. Sorry, Yvette, that's all you. <laughs> I'm Victoria Bandy. I'm Ben Terry. I'm a senior at Monero High School. I'm Nick Chonko, I'm also a senior. Sarah Gray, I'm also a senior. Well, I've been teach at Mount Air at Science. Dan Gibson, I also teach at Mount Air at Environmental Science and other science classes. All right. Well, I thank you guys for coming, and I want to open the floor to the presentation that Mount Airat's done um, and sharing with the Energy Committee what you guys have been up to. And then we'll take the last questions after um, all three are done. That's all right. Sure. If you want to tell me which poster is going first, I'll put it up on here. Ooh, you want oh, it's on the back. Probably start with take the survey. Start with the survey and. So you can use the lectern if you want to or whatever. So um, I was part of a group that was doing an energy survey of Monarat students of all grades. Um, our goal was to collect and evaluate student opinion about climate change and the environment in general. Um, so we sent it out to everyone in the school um, and then degrees available for a week and a half. So in terms of survey design, we reviewed two pre-existing surveys, the Thompson Adult Survey and the Student Survey from Ones at High School, and we kind of made edits to these kind of um, is this oh, yeah. um, we made edits to these two surveys just to make them fit the demographic that we we're actually talking about, which is obviously one of our students. Um, but ultimately, we pretty much made small changes um, that we make in the future edits. And like you said, the survey was available for a week and a half, and out of about 750 students, around 18.5 percent actually participated, so not a huge number. Right? Um, and the first part of the survey was the general overview of, oh, uh, of students' awareness of climate change, and then demographic information. And then the third part was optional, and it had five more in-depth questions about um, individual actions and preparations for climate change. I think just be careful about holding it. It's a little finicky. Okay. You're doing great. Okay. <laughs> um, so I need the data. Um, I will go over every little tiny bit, but um, basically asking about how concerned people are about climate change um, on a scale of zero to four, with zero being not at all and four being extremely. People said an average of three for both um, changes to weather and impacts of severe weather um, addressing it. And then we talked about what places and populations are most vulnerable and how Thompson's climate actually have actually compared to the state of Maine. And 41% of people said to set a similar goal to the state of Maine. Um, most people either said that or greater, like a greater goal. And then um, in terms of demographics, 34% of students surveyed by full time Thompson. Um, there was a relatively even distribution of grade levels. And then in terms of which um, kinds of climate related issues people have experienced, you can see. The, sort of the breakdown and which impacts people thought are mentioned prioritized. Um, and in terms of what people think the school can do to help the climate, the most common answers were to, were to do with lunch packaging, a lot of like plastic mm -hmm. that's being used, and it would encourage more to say and increase awareness about the climate. So a lot of that is present in the analysis of results. People are concerned about climate impact. Um, Biggest observed concerns involve extreme weather, flooding, and populations of water. And the most observed impacts of climate change so far include damage to property in public areas, power outages, and weather changes. Um, there definitely were gaps in people's understanding of how to implement climate action. That was a big thing we noticed. People thought that we need climate action, but didn't know what exactly needed to be done. 
um, and I discussed what ideas people did have. And then our references, the Brunswick High School Energy Survey, and then, oh, sorry, and the Thompson Energy Survey, and then on our students who we surveyed. Yeah, you can just put it in there. It's okay. So, yes, we don't have anyone here from the tree group. Um, you want to us to say a little general about the tree group or? Sure. Okay. Um, so we got the slide. One of you guys can talk about the bigger one. So, okay. <laughs> well, um, I think we just, we just measured like trees in a certain area. Um, we found how big each tree was. Um, the different types of trees. So you were trying to determine how much carbon was being sequestered by the trees on the property of the school, right? Yes. Yeah. Just, just from Mount Era, not the middle school. Yeah, well, how far that? It's less. Less than the school. It was significant, right? Yeah. It made a difference. I think there were two numbers uh, that were trying to be determined. One was how much was being stored by what's there. Mm -hmm. And the other piece was how much is being sequestered by what's there per year. And it's re really how much is being sequestered by the trees there per year, which was important because that was going to try and tie into trying to determine how far off um, Mount Air was from being carbon neutral or not. And so the third group, which is here, um, took those numbers into account as they tried to determine what could be done with Mount Air to bring it to carbon neutrality. Uh, there were, I think if you look at the, the slide, there were 17, uh, 13 blocks that the students measured the trees and got an average uh, through a system that's used by foresters, I believe, uh, to determine how much board feet there are per acre and got a number of trees, how many trees on average there were per acre based on these blocks they studied. And then uh, a very general algorithm was used to determine how much was stored on those in those trees. More detail could have been gone into, like looking at species, even though we did figure out species of trees. Um, we did not go into a very specific, like, okay, they're red oaks, how much are they going to have on average? And all the trees were locked together, a very broad um, um, algorithm, as I said, to then determine how much on average those trees were stored in, and also how much was being produced. Uh, or how much they were sequestering per year. So we got a lot of help from Steve Pelletier. We were very fortunate on that. That was one of, one of the big advantage, uh, big gains from our early meetings because we were like, how are we going to figure this out? <laughs> yeah. And Steve said, oh, I can help. <laughs> yeah, I think that you invited him in on one of the Zoom meetings. We were like, that was like, that was, that's major. So, those, I think you all know Steve Pelletier. Yes, is, yes, yes, he got a guy who used to be the head of uh, Stan Tech here locally, and now he's on the Board of Environmental Protection. You can't, can't get somebody more uh, more expertise than Steve. So Steve showed us a system to uh, measure the measure these plots and, and then help with the calculations. He's doing some similar work with the Bunch of Cops and Land Trust. So. <laughs> this is right off the bat. Perfect. 
So the message to the students is keep the trees wherever possible and yeah, plant trees more. Make a difference. <laughs> I put this next group that's going to tie in as, as please, they please, please went through them. energy bills and all kinds of things to try to figure out what that area uses yeah. and how much uh, how much the trees are doing from that area. I don't know. If you'd also prefer, you can leave it in the thing and stand at the lectern so it doesn't give the feedback. It's up to you. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Uh, I'm Ontario and <laughs> we are part of the Meyer High School on energy use and efficiency. Um, the problem we were covering was can Manorat achieve carbon neutrality within its campus and um, how can Manorat be more energy efficient? Um, a little background on wind power is due to like the large amount of students we have, it takes a lot of energy uh, to serve the needs of everyone. Um, we also have 1,687 solar panels on our roof, um, and our solar electricity generate, generated varies by much. Um, all the energy generated from our solar panels uh, are sent to slope heat and calculated. Um, then we receive credit for the energy. Without, I'm oh, sorry, um, natural gas MTA is mainly used for heating and cooking, but without our geothermal, uh, geothermal system, its overall energy use would be high. Um, our process was we obtained energy, electric, and gas bills, and then we determined the natural gas use of our school. Uh, then we calculated how much energy used the solar panels would cover or would use over a year. Um, then we compared the amount of energy generated from solar panels um, with how much of the school uses. Uh, then we went up onto the roof um, to measure the square footage of the area of the solar panels. Then we calculated again how many more solar panels were needed for energy to be balanced and uh, carbon neutral. Um, we identified in inventory uh, areas near school where the extra solar panels could be located. Mm. Then we determined how many solar panels they use this year. Yeah, so if you look at the graph in the middle of the poster, um, the red is how much our solar panels generate each month, and the blue is how much found in high school used. Um, so you see that the blue is almost twice as high as the red in just months. Um, in the middle months, like May, June, July, and August, you find that the average electricity use is a lot lower because the students aren't in school then. Um, and then we can do our calculations. So we found that NR uses 983 metric tons of CO2 for electric use. And then we added in the natural gas of 52.5 metric tons to have a total of 1,035 metric tons of CO2 use. Um, and so then we found that our solar panels generate 453 metric tons. And with a little, little help from the forest group, we found that the forest and the trees remove 190 pounds of CO2 metric tons. Um, so together, the solar panels in the forest, we added them up and they saved 643 metric tons of CO2. Um, and so this means that the school is not carbon neutral, it's 392.5 metric tons of what it should be neutral. Um, and then we calculated how many more solar panels we would need to be carbon neutral, and that was 1,454. Um, so about 51% of electrical energy use that energy that MTA uses comes from the solar panels. MTA uses about twice as much energy as it generates. Um, and proposed areas would fit approximately 3,906 solar panels. So then we went on Google Earth and got a like an overhead view of the school. Um, we figured that behind the turf and track, it would fit 690 extra solar panels. Um, in between the school and the parking area, it did an extra 481. Behind the school would be 891. And then we had an idea that we could put like a canopy above the student parking lot to fit <laughs> 1,844 extra solar panels. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, I have a lot more solar panels than we need, but. So, I've got some questions. Uh, um, 
So Mount Ararat was built as an alternative renewable energy system building with most of the heat coming from the geothermal was my impression. Only minuscule uh, fossil fuel burning appliances in the, in the basement to heat during the coldest part of the winter. How is that working out? Are those, is that where your quote natural fuel, your methane is, is being burned? Um, more so, than expected, or what's going I on? think fiber natural gas definitely comes from the cooking. I don't think it's heat. I think that's just electrical. Okay. Um, and then outside of our school, I think we have some heat that's underneath the tiles to melt the snow in the winter. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's part of it. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is what's the proportion of, of heating for the building and cooling that comes from geothermal approximately? Is it 70%? Is it, and the, and the heat pumps provide 40%? It may probably vary seasonally. Yeah, definitely varies. But um, I'd what, say, what is, and I don't know, it's hard to tell. I'd say it's definitely a decent amount of energy that comes from the geothermal system. And and most of the rest of the heating, well, my other question is why in the summer, in July, August, when you're producing the most electricity from your panels, are you not meeting the school's needs? Because is there summer school going on? Is there a lot of cooling going on? Can't a lot of the functions be shut down in the summer? I mean, there's definitely a lot of less use in the summer because it's semester wide, but there's still teachers there doing work, I believe, and there's definitely still summer school. Um, I think one of the big factors is it's a hot month, so you gotta put the energy in the cooler school as well. Yeah, I've wondered about that. Maybe cool about a lot that. Of energy. So, so can you summarize what you said about the new? About was there is there a room on the roof to to increase the carbon neutrality of the school with more solar panels? Is that something? That's realistic. Or what it, it sounded like you'd have to put up huge amount more solar panels. Yeah, put up 1,454. Um, and I think we already have around 1,600 on the roof. So, so almost, almost twice as much. Almost doubling. Yeah. And, and, and the roof is pretty much maxed out. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I did. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you. It's really impressive work that you folks have done. Yeah. You also say that all the power generated from the solar panels goes to CMP. Is that really true? Right. Sure. That's where it goes to first. Okay. So, it, so it doesn't usually when somebody has a solar panel at the solar panels on site, usually it's tied directly into your power, into your panel, and any excess goes to CMP. So if you're drawing power now from the it, and the solar panels are generating it, it'll come from the solar panels directly. Do you know if that's true? our understanding? Um, and my understanding is that most systems these days it will be electricity on the grid first and then it puts it back on. So it's easier for CMP to then calculate how much you've given them and how much you've used from them. And that's and that's how most systems are set up, to my understanding. Well, that they did that during a brief period when they changed the laws and tried to get rid of net metering, but that never took effect. So are they are they really are doing that? I'm I'm pretty sure that's okay. Oh, man. Yeah. okay. Yeah, I, mean, I I don't know our system. Yeah, I, I'm also pretty sure yeah. the electricity generated is actually different than the electricity used. Like it has a step, and I'm I'm not an electrician by any means. Some of these are from but I think they have to step it down, and then put it on the grid. So like the form of energy that comes in into the solar panels is not like something you can immediately just yeah. use as electricity in your building. You actually have to go through a transformer and be converted into the correct form of energy. So I I think it's just easier for them if they put it on the grid. And that's what we were told, but you know, I can't say we, you know, okay. went and thoroughly invested. No, that's, in that's curious. I'm just curious. But that's, that's, Nancy, that's... to get back to your geothermal question, we, we really couldn't calculate. We didn't take the scope to calculate what it was doing, but we do know it's how big it, its numbers would be worse if it wasn't for the geothermal. But how much the geothermal is actually contributing more energy than that? Yeah. yeah. We just know it's better because of the geothermal. Yeah, it is. The presentation that was made that we asked about by members of the planning committee implied that that it would be the major source of heat, and that's why the the burners in the basement were going to be so small. But I, I don't know the extent of the heat pumps. I know there are quite a lot of them. But I know the building was built with triple pane glass and some of those big north facing windows to to conserve energy. Did you guys consider measuring student transportation and faculty transportation as a source of uh, and energy to get getting kids to school and back as, as part of the footprint of the school? That's a good question. We, we knew it was would be an extra challenge. And yeah. Yeah. We just we started small and yeah. I mean, that's, that is another question to ask, yeah. no question about it. Yeah. We just decided. It sounds like the to try to get our 
panel on this part of it was enough for it, it for, was yeah, huge. for eight it was, months or it, maybe eight weeks. Eight weeks, eight months, wow, eight it was a huge project. I'm really impressed, and it's so useful for what we're doing because it's, it updates to what what the intentions for the building was and what's really happening, which is not clearly not the same. Do you have a question, Nick? Oh, I was just going to ask. Do you know if they get uh, the uh, if, there's two programs. Uh, one is that the school gets credited back a dollar value, you know, for kilowatt hours that are exported to the grid. Um, and the other is a net metering thing, which is a direct offset. Do you know if they're, if that, which program they're on? With this one, CMP? Yeah, yeah. So the co the big commercial jobs now tend to be this dollar value credit. You know, they say that, you know, a kilowatt hour is worth, you know, for the next six months, it's worth 17.9 cents. And then you generate X number of kilowatt hours and then you get a credit on your bill, but you sort of have to purchase power elsewhere and then offset the uh, uh, offset the power that way. Yeah. yeah. No. We didn't. It's called the tariff rates. Yeah, yeah, it might be in the bill yeah. somewhere. Yeah, in order like they had CMP report, that wasn't something we weren't looking for. Yeah, I mean it's 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 just a thing. I, I think economically it's advantageous, but you do have to export the power to the grid and then pull power in, you know, with that system, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Hey, Sarah, you said that um, students had a hard time giving some examples. I picked up on that as well um, when you asked to suggest what the school could be help with climate change. And I'm suspecting that all the projects came out at the same time. But I'm thinking that perhaps if they had seen Ben and Nick's um, documentation first, mm -hmm. if you think that would have helped inspire some thoughts on that, or, or what do you? Why do you think that folks weren't able to answer that question? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that like short of this class that we've all just taken, um, there's not a lot of like specifically addressing climate issues in classes in school. Not to say that it's avoided, but just that. It, you don't dive into it as much um, a lot of the time in science classes. But I do think that if people had seen, for example, their presentation, more people might have said, oh, we could add more solar panels to, like, I think that when people were answering, what do you think the school can do to help the climate? They weren't necessarily thinking about energy use as much as just, um, like, more maybe traditional, that's not really the word, but, um, like, environmental issues, like, like, plastic being used. Do you have like a green team or anything at school? Do you have a club that covers any of this? A garden club? We have, an, we have Envirofon, which is not, yeah, we use the Envirofon. It's more so, of a wildlife. Okay, yeah. yeah. Forestry, but then, although to be fair, the Envirofon problem this year is not exactly this, but um, <laughs> okay. it's not really a focus on it. For sure. Is energy taught in the physical science class of the ninth grade or whatever? When, when, when is it in the curriculum? So uh, in ninth grade science, they do teach uh, climate change, uh, and then they do a unit on human impact, but it's only if a student chooses to do a project on energy that a student would learn about energy specifically in this context. Okay. And then we do touch on energy within all the sciences. We touch on energy, but not in this context. You know, physics, we talk about energy, you know, convert energy conversion, things like yeah, that. Not, not, not in relation to climate change and people's behavior and how they could change. Yeah, yeah. Victoria. Yeah. Um, yes, I've written a few questions for, I guess they're for Sarah, um, or maybe some other students want to jump in, but about the survey project, because I'm always so interested in how you get people involved or what, what kind of um, inspires them to pick up a survey. <laughs> so how did you um how did you distribute it? How did you entice people to to fill it out? Um well so we sent it out via email to everyone in school and or we didn't. I think you were well, the Mr. Mr. Yeah principal um sent it out to everyone. And honestly I think in terms of enticing people we didn't really entice people enough because like a lot of people didn't respond. Um, but we tried to convince people that we knew to take it, and it was every science teacher, I think, was told to 
like tell the classes specifically about technique and give them a little bit of time. Just it only it only took a few minutes to do yeah. so. Um, science. You actually got a pretty good response. Um, yeah. surprisingly. So, um, and do you think? Uh, were you surprised by any of the results, or what? What surprised you all? Um, I wasn't super. I wasn't. I think we weren't super surprised because it was. It was basically the majority of people understood that there is an issue of climate change that needs to be addressed, and as expected, there were some outliers. Of people either as a joke or genuinely say, "Oh, what are you talking about?" But for the most part, um, the responses were not too surprising. Um, like, I don't know. I think in terms of what people thought was important, like, for the most part, I, I think we were, we understood where people were coming from, like, that people have the right idea about what impacts um, have been most noticeable and need to be clarified. And then the last one was to follow up, and I guess what Yvette was asking about follow up actions, and um, I know you, you know, reducing lunch plastic use and that kind of thing. Um, what do you think it'll take to to follow up on some of these actions? Is it, you know, do you need a dedicated committee? Do you think, or are there other ways that you can in encourage students to follow up on some of the? I know most of you are seniors, so you're yeah. on your way out, but, you know, um, is it maybe re repeating a similar project next year to this or something like that to get more people involved? I guess maybe this question for Mr. Evans or, or the other teacher. I'm, I'm on our way out, too. Oh, you are? Oh, yeah. And we had extra time built into our schedule this semester. We don't next year, so mm. it's... It's kind of one of those new projects like this is awesome. They take time mm -hmm. and the time is the hardest thing to, to get. Um, I like I would say it'd be great to do stuff like this with a club, but even clubs, we're having a very hard time encouraging kids to do clubs because I mean, all three of you are athletes. Um, most of our students mm -hmm. that would participate in clubs are participating in athletics and it's very difficult to mm -hmm. encourage them to also jump in and fully commit to a club. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, makes sense. I've got a, maybe a tough one, maybe not. So which sequesters more carbon, an acre of forest or an acre of solar panels? Okay. I've done my solar panels. <laughs> acre solar panels? Please. Yeah. Does that surprise you? We built them to intentionally give us extra energy. So they only, they only, you realize they only absorb about 18% of the solar instant solar energy. So, you know, you kind of think about that and you think about the trees that they're natural. So they're like, <laughs> how come? But anyway. But yeah, there must be a tree in ourself. And there it is. The materials to solar panels. So, eco friendly first construct them the trees to make drones. Um, I had another one. Um, for you all. Has doing this research changed the way you thought about climate change, its implications, or potential solutions? Yeah. I mean, at first, like, I would have never even thought that, like, like the forest surrounding that area could have such an impact on the carbon storage. You know, I wouldn't have thought of that. So I kind of opened my eyes on that mm -hmm. subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the older the forest is, the more mature, the more carbon sequestered. Yeah. So it's important. It's yeah. over 40, 50 years old, and much more useful for that. Yeah. So. And it was cool working with Steve. Like, he taught us how to measure the trees. That was cool mm -hmm. working with him. He's such a nice guy. So <laughs> that was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe this has not changed how to think about climate change, but like it, it definitely helped me understand how people are out thinking of climate change. Um, a little better and like what, what the attitude is when people at school, which for the most part was what I would hope to see and not like horrifying if people don't understand anything. Yeah, I feel like a big part was the data and the calculations we did. Um, like you didn't really, you knew it was a problem, but you didn't really know how much of a problem it was and so you did the math on it. Yes. Yeah, 
several of them have been asked already, but uh, did you, you did it modify the survey so you could identify towns, class levels, were there significant differences in where people were from or what the grade level was? Um, not really. Um, we found that 34% of the students that we surveyed lived in Thompson full time, um, which I don't know what it is in the school at large, what the percentages are for the different towns. Um, but I mean, that is that is less than half who actually live in Thompson. So, like, I don't know. People still people still know about Thompson because we go to school here, but like, it definitely makes a difference. And then for grade level, um, it was pretty even. Uh, seniors were most represented, and juniors were least represented. Uh, why? But <laughs> I, was, I was wondering if, uh, if perhaps where the students had gone to school before they came to either the oh. middle school or the high school, if they had different knowledge of energy or if they were learning more mm -hmm. as they advanced in high school. So that... Yeah, that's possible. I don't know. We didn't, I don't think we asked what town people were from. We just asked if they were from Thompson or not. Okay. Um, that might be, I might be misremembering. Just set this out. No, I think you're right. Okay. Live full time in Thompson. Yeah. yeah. At least that's what our survey had. I don't think we got to be quantified yeah. too much. Yeah. 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 Um, so I don't know exactly what the different like elementary schools would be like, or, or just living in different towns has a different impact. Yeah. Where so, are you guys uh, going to share your posters? Uh, three, of you, uh, three of you, anybody, any of you live in Thompson? Yeah, but uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, we went to the west side. Oh, yeah, okay. Awesome. Would you have another say? question oh, or statement, I guess. Uh, would it be possible to have copies of the posters to share at our workshop in July? Or would that be okay with all of you? Sure, of course. Yeah. Well, we, ultimately, we're those, those three posters are going to be put up in that area in and around the famous <laughs> display panel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, uh, but if you want to use them, I mean, if you would like to use them before that for something else and then return it to us, we can get it hung up there later. Or can we print? Yes, we can print them. I uh, I was I wasn't sure if I should say that because we're all here, you know, on climate change and stuff, but yes, I can I can print poster size uh things. Um so I could print copies of those. I don't have a large laminator though, but I know. We so you print them, we I think we can get them laminated for okay. you. Yeah. Have have you guys presented this to any other audience? These posters haven't been up anywhere yet. Yes. Wow. They're really fabulous true. posters. I mean, yeah. just uh, the information packed into that is, is yeah. just yeah. fabulous. It's hard to make a good poster. Mm -hmm. I was thinking they looked like college level ones I had seen. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to follow up to see if there's interest in getting these shared at the library and for the town Bonian, so I think it might be nice if we could have them at the library there too, if you're interested, because your name would be on them and somebody might know you and <laughs> reach out. Yeah. And is anyone interested in pursuing anything in science later on? Um, I might be. I'm going to be looking for civil engineering next year. So maybe an environmental engineering a little bit, but I'm not sure. Awesome. Nice. Yes. I'm also going to be made. Or we're going to be really late. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Business, you know, like managing. So. Okay. Yeah. Sarah? I'm going to McAllister in Minnesota for international studies. So not, not But it, I'm it's sure good. everything's interrelated. Huh? So, yeah. yeah. I bet it'll come up. Thank you greatly. Yeah, yeah, thank you. It's going to be helpful for our public outreach meeting in July, end of July, July 30th. Letting folks know what's going on in the area. And if you're still around, July 30th, we are having this meeting. So we'd be yeah. happy to have you or any other students. And there's an opening on the energy committee. I don't see that it has any, uh, <laughs> you know, age limits or anything, but it does sound like you're all leaving. So it's probably, yeah. yeah I'm not sure if under 18. It didn't Just say, I, I looked it up. You looked it up. Okay. I, I don't know. It didn't say anything. <laughs> But I do think it would be a good idea to have youth and student involvement mm -hmm. as much as we can, what we can. <laughs>
Well, just thanks so much. I we really yeah. appreciate your hard work. It was awesome. Yep. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. And I hope all this makes the newspapers <laughs> carry on. <laughs> Just like <laughs> <laughs> thanks for working with us and uh, you know kind of a kind of like a marriage you know it has both sides a little give and take as we move along with this process and uh, I think we both speak for themselves uh, since did an awesome job and this was an awesome uh, forum to set up so I don't want to share what they found out yeah Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, we'll talk next year. Pleasure is ours. Yeah. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks a lot. All right, back to the regularly regularly scheduled program. <laughs> um, right. Invitation for public comment. So Looks like none. Um, discussion of the April twenty third meeting minutes. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. oh, no. One thing I noticed on that is that the, uh, the, the workshop in July was uh, quoted to gather information on risks and prioritizing climate action. So we were thinking back then that we would be talking about climate actions at that first meeting of the public, as well as gathering information from them. That was that was in our minutes for that, that we're just about to approve. And so I think that's important to get folks. But one thing, we need to have a positive image of the future of the effects of climate change in Maine and Thompson so that we're not just looking at grim bosses and things, but we're thinking about, ah, we might have public transportation. We might be learning more better forestry. We could be doing things that will make it a healthier and safer. So I think we should have that part of what do we do positively in, in from the very beginning of our public interactions. But that's my you know, tell the tell the story of uh, how we can make things better, ameliorate, mitigate some of climate change and benefit from in some ways. Certain crops are going to go better along the growing season. We have a lot of fires. Any other comments on the minutes? No. no. Sorry. Or a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Okay. All right. So old business. First up is public outreach updates. Um, Saturday, May 18th, Victor and Nick um, and myself um, and Victoria, uh, we all passed out uh, postcards at the transfer station from 10 to 2. Um, I don't know how many we passed out, but. I wasn't really counting, but you know, a fair number, probably 20, 25. Someone's just the store Um the postcard had a QR code for the um climate action survey and the deadline that it's gonna be closing at the end of this month, May 31st. And it also had a save the date memo on that for um our first community conversation July 30th the town office um, at 6 p.m., you know, 6.30. Um, and then anybody else, anybody that was there want to comment on? Yeah. I was surprised yeah. given like, I mean, people are like rushing in there with all the boxes and stuff. And I expected most people to be like, I don't have time, but they were actually surprisingly receptive and willing to talk. Not everybody, but um, you know, I thought there were some good conversations Great. happening. Great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, we didn't get. Um, I think we got about three or four. Um, so the first time, I think we got about five people who actually took the survey within the next day or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this last one, I think it was three or four. I don't remember the percentage. It wasn't a whole lot, but. We got almost as many or more at the uh, town meeting. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, it was good. So you guys went to the town meeting. Who was able to table? Um, 
Yeah, I, Nick, I, I was. Yeah, Nick, I yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, how'd that go? You guys pass out most of the postcards? Uh, I don't think we passed out that many no. postcards because but some people. It wasn't a hugely attended. Yeah, it wasn't that. Meeting. It really was a pretty skimpy town meeting. But but um, actually, we got two people taking it on the iPads. Uh, oh, yes. three, yes. three, three people. people. It was three people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we can bring those to things. Yeah, I'm there. Was it was a receptive crowd, and you know, people were genuinely pleased. Yeah. You know that we were doing stuff. Awesome. Um, yeah. The uh, at the transfer station. Um, I was a little sobered by, uh, and you guys know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah. There was a, a very intense exchange with yeah. one guy. Um, and it was like one of these situations where you're not going to win. You know, I mean, you can say something to this person, then he's going to bring up something else you know and keep twisting and twisting and twisting mm -hmm. until he's got you like blue in the face and i think they turn in the deck and say they were pretty blue in the face about it um i was kind of observing but it just got me thinking about the notion of uh you could easily get hijacked you know i'm thinking about the uh i'm thinking about the public meeting and I think it would be good for all of us to, you know, kind of delve into that notion of like, you know, what what we can do to, you know, end those conversations that are absolutely going to go nowhere. You're not going to end up with somebody convinced. Yeah. And you're perhaps, you know, I mean, I was watching people go by. We probably lost a couple of people, you know, as as uh, as they were going by because they're like, yeah. wow. Yep. Well, hopefully the, wanna, the, the you know, FB, they'll have, they'll facilitate and they'll be experienced in sort of the art of I, I hope for that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm also just thinking about, you know, as we, as we communicate with people, you know, out there in the world, just, you know, thinking about, well, what is it that we can talk about that we could actually agree on, you know, and yeah. done a lot of thinking about this over the last couple of weeks and, uh, you know, the win-win and tops them so far, and I don't think that we have to be ashamed or feel that, you know, this is a compromise or something like that. The win-win has been economics, mm -hmm. you know, has been the profitability of investing in renewables, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a way of, of mitigating climate change. Yeah, but it's also a moneymaker, and it's also a way of, uh, you know, in a, in a long-term approach, it's also a way of uh, of mitigating economic costs, you know, greater costs for, you know, having to do something about what happens later, you know. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I, for a long time, I felt like, I felt like, oh, uh, you know, all they care about is money. You know, the only way that we're ever going to get these guys to, you know, to sign on to, you know, the solar, uh, you know, uh, PPA that we did was because it was uh, going to save the town money. Well, okay. That's, that's... So anyway, I'm, I I I just think we all should think a little bit about and try to you know delve into that one thing because mm -hmm. you know I believe that FB at the meeting that they're already skilled and you know we've actually seen uh, Bina talk about you know her uh, you know altercations you know in Camden you know where. You know they might have gone a little bit too far, and then they got a lot of a lot of blowback. So you know they've got some experience with this, but also we're kind of the emissaries here, and you know to be able to you know think about okay, find the common ground, find the common ground, find the common ground. What is it we all want for our community? Yeah. We want a yeah. safer, healthy, uh, able to get around, functional system. There's a lot of things that we can agree on, and yeah. we're not going to get everybody, but. You know, we're going to get some people. So anyway, that's my blah, blah, you know, from, from, you know, sort of having learned a thing or two, just, you know, getting a little bit scared, you know, by the whole situation. Well, my takeaway is don't engage with those who your minds is already made up. <laughs> just, mm -hmm. It's just not going to work. Yep. <laughs> I think there's, there's some stuff in that climate table um, document that, um, 
What's her name? Jessica. Jessica had chaired. So I'll go control for that and send it back out again. So folks can take a moment to look at that. I think a lot of this, I, I deal with this at work a lot. It's really about how you frame the issues. You don't use a lot of highfalutin words, you know, kind of just not dumbing it down. It's just, it's providing it in sort of plain talk that resonates with people every day, you know, which is often, um, you know, purse strings, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, saving money and um, making sure that roads are safe in emergencies and those kinds of things. And I mean, hopefully FB will, you know, will frame things that way too, but that's my experience. And that's what main climate table sort of focuses on. Mm -hmm. One thing that would also be really interesting and useful for us to have maybe before that meeting is some current figures. Because you know, like with the with the solar PPA, we started out with this figure thirty eight thousand dollars savings per year. You know, projected over you know multiple years. I believe that that number has probably grown significantly. You know, since since then. You know, you mean the solar electricity? The, what we the, save, what we save it. from from our uh, solar, you know, power purchase agreement, okay. I that believe that. has grown so, significantly. Wow! Well, you know, the yearly savings. We have, a, we have a long term. We have a contract with Constellation Energy at a pretty good rate. I don't right. know when that renews or if it has renewed. I think it's over by now, but it okay. it would be. It, be is there any way that we can get? Sorry, I'm <laughs> use, guys. Any way that we can get current? Uh, yeah, what um, economics, you know, just yeah. sort of a sketch on that. I would, I would assume that we have information on that. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen it or talked to someone explicitly yeah. about it, so I don't want to say, oh yeah, absolutely, and then be like, no. Um, but yeah, I have LED lights too. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely check on the PPA. Um, so you're wondering about cost savings associated with that, and you're wondering about cost savings associated with the lights. Yeah, okay. just so that we. I just know. wanted to write yeah. to say that in that way, so that I could write it down in a way that right. makes sense when I ask someone this question. <laughs> Yeah, because if we're gonna if we're gonna be talking about these things, you know, having current information, particularly if it's you know better, you know, information, um, the the trajectory of of you know energy costs, you know, of, of solar savings, uh, at least at Morningstar on our thing, we've gone from from seventy percent offset to almost one hundred percent offset just because of the economics over yeah. the years. So my initial projections of what we were going to, you know, be saving in electric bills are like way off by like 40%. 40 so you need to electrify more. Exactly. better than what you expected. Way better. That's Almost 40% so better. That's because the escalator so, isn't what they thought. Exactly. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So anyway, those, you know, there's always projections and, and it's good to catch up and, you know, no, I'll check. I'll check on them. Yeah, yeah. I, I I feel pretty confident that we have information on the purchase power. The lights might be harder. I'm yeah, not sure. There's not that much time. Yeah, it's just, it just may not be as clear of a thing where it's like explicitly like listed. But I'll certainly check in on both of those. Definitely, the lease uh, payment Thanks. should be obvious because those just stop. Yes. Yeah. That's so right. Savings, yeah. But then there's the whole energy. Yeah. But I think that the lease part of it was the most expensive. That mm -hmm. was the real savings was to like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's already finished. Is that what you said? Yeah, we, yeah, oh, yeah. We bought the lights. That'd be the easiest piece yeah. of math. Yeah, we bought the but... old lights and then replaced them. Oh, oh, okay. So we paid the paid the depreciated value for the right. old lights and then we replaced them. So that way we're not paying monthly for a lease of those. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know that right. it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I I have a question. I was reading through the minutes carefully. Um, I do we still want information on what different departments have. Done in energy savings or increase since the was it 2010 the, the first climate um, survey uh, action plan because I I I volunteered to do that and I haven't I forgot to do that so would that, would that, that, be, would that useful to us to have that we I did a little bit of digging uh, you know uh, you know Meg was looking for some background information yeah um, <laughs> got some interesting responses. Oh, oh, uh, no, I don't know if it was. The fire department considers uh, electrification of their vehicles and emergency equipment to be off limits. Um, 
it, it, it's based on. I mean, they've got their reasons. Yeah, yeah. You know, they've so, got their reasons. Because maintenance is is minimal, minimal. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's all good. But what they're what they're hedging against is is a hundred percent performance, which you're never going to hundred percent performance from a diesel truck either. But um, they're not confident enough that they can send something out, you know, for a twelve hour. So, you know, he gave a pretty good reason. Uh, police department, uh, he was cordial, um, but, uh, you know, they're stopping at one hybrid. Uh, they're very skeptical about hybrids, uh, you know, complaining about the supply chain and problems that some other places have had with hybrids. So, you know, that might be a slow, you know, a slow burn. Um, and the public works department, um, they use biodiesel, um, but only 5% in the winter and 10% in the summer for their diesels. Um, but their energy costs have gone up a lot because they do a lot more work than they did in 2010. So you're thinking about, you know, they mow more lawns, they plow more, they right. plow sidewalks, right. they've taken some of the rec departments, right. they've right. taken all, all, right. so the idea all of the rec departments, of, of electric, yeah. Yeah. Buy, buy an electric mower and charge it. This is not a decrease of the time to have machines on available as opposed to, to uh, 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 and, and I they'll come around on that, yeah. you know, but I mean, we're talking about like. 90% of the energy use is really like diesel trucks. Yeah. You know, mostly diesel trucks. And, so. and dump trucks. And, and yeah. And yeah. Big things. Plow but, trucks. And, and they yeah. need, they, yeah, they, well, it's oh. part of it is history and what they're used to. And part of it is they're doing really heavy physical work. And, and then those machines are just still being developed, really, and and, and, and tried out, right? And, and well, whether, not out of the question, but it's, we're not quite there. Yeah. 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 But anyway, that's the report from those guys. You. you know, they're, they're not, against it but they're you know they're cautious cautious i just want to add in that dennis is like at two-thirds staff capacity and has been for quite a while and, um he struggles to get stuff done That's just the parks I, I mean i finally That's our public works director public works. i finally <laughs> ran into a town meeting and he was like oh yeah <laughs> no he's he's so and busy he, you know um these days and you know i think the thing is is if you know i know we're working on a climate action plan but that if if the energy committee were to come up, you know, with like a really well-researched, clear, easy proposal, that's just going to be a lot easier for someone like him to see. And, you know, it's not just his decision. Our managers have a lot to do with things as well. Mm -hmm. um, but that like part of the issue is just time and effort of staff to have to look into things and the concern of, um, you know, something new, you, you can't be sure exactly how it'll operate and, you know, react and stuff. And when I, I think in Dennis's instance, you know, he's, he's just, he's, he is out there like digging trenches and mowing oh, yeah. lawns and stuff. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, we, we had to ask him a question the other day and he was mowing over there, you know, and um, so just that, that, that shouldn't be underestimated that it's, you know, the effort and time required to look into things is in some cases, and, and the police department is also not at full capacity okay. either. Okay. Um, they were like fully staffed for two weeks last August is the joke. Um, so yeah. just that both of those departments struggle to stay fully staffed. And I'm not saying that's their whole reasoning. There's other reasons that Nick uncovered and stuff. And um, But I just wanted to note that from like an administrative, I, I hear about that all the time. And that I think that we should also just be aware of those reasons yeah no door slammed shut at, at public works and no door slammed shut at the police department just you know skepticism and caution um so you know i think they're fair game yeah. i have a, another question about the public workshop although i won't be here i'll be on vacation <laughs> but um yeah. well other... wait until we get to new business Oh, I thought we were okay. talking about the public workshop. No, no. Um, intern is next. Any update? No, yes. <clears throat> so I spoke with ISE last week, um, and they are not hugely interested in climate change as an area of study, quite honestly. They're more interested in mapping projects and development and planning um, in a more traditional sense. So they are willing to do a bit of data visualization for the project, and they'll come to the meeting on 730. But I'd say beyond that, they aren't going to do any projects. Um, yes 
Um, so that's my update. So um, it would be good to touch base with whoever had suggested data visualization at some point so we can um, really figure out exactly what will be helpful to have from them. Because I did say, you know, I know they're really interested in having you do something. If you're okay to do some data visualization, that'd be great. And they're like, yeah, that's fine. But there's other projects that they want to work on, which other people here have um, <laughs> actually suggested. <laughs> um, but they just have a lot of ArcGIS experience and are really excited to work with that. And we just didn't have anything in this project for them with that really right now. Um, so they'll be at the 7.30 meeting, I think, and they'll do a bit of data visualization, but otherwise we'll probably be focusing on other areas of planning. I think that was meant to ask for the data visualization. Okay. Did we talk about that at all, Victor? Um, I think I said it was a good idea, but I don't think I had anything particular in mind. Okay. Time. But um, I maybe, it's a good question, maybe from the survey? Yeah. Um, would you want to have a meeting at some point just to talk? Because they did say they do a little bit. I have to think about it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I can talk about it. I'm not quite sure. I'm not really good at figuring this stuff out. Maybe she is. <laughs> um, I just don't know how to take this survey and sort of make it. Yeah. Other than graphs and stuff. Yeah. Um, well, maybe would you have it in you in the next few weeks to look at the survey yeah. and see, and then we can talk about if there's something you yeah, need. Certainly. Okay. We're going to close it for a week, so I'll yeah. take a deeper, deeper dive into the data okay. display instead of most of the book. Yeah. Deeper dive and see what, uh, what, maybe there's something in there that could really be done. Okay. Um, and actually, you know, we have all those suggestions about mm -hmm. sort of what needs to be done. Maybe we could do a word cloud or something. Mm -hmm. I, I, something yeah. like something like yeah. that might show yes. just like what kind of Think terms are coming up a lot. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm just. That's a great idea. No, that's great. I think you can do that right in in the survey program. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um. um yeah. No. That that'll be great because they're not starting until the end of next week. Okay. Um. And then I think next Friday we'll just be admin. They're coming to build main with me on Thursday. Um, and then we're doing admin on Friday, probably just getting them set up. And yeah. then the beginning of next week, they're going to do some of the department tours that the other interns do. So they'll be starting to work on stuff, but they won't be quite as available. Um, so you'll have time to look things over and figure out where it would be helpful. What's and stuff. the intern's name? Issy. Issy? Issy. How do you spell it? I-S-S-I-E. I-S-S-I-E. Yeah. And they use they them pronouns. So that's close. Okay, so new businesses, the um, official date for our first community conversation is July 30th, which is a Tuesday, right here in this room, 6.30 to 8. Um, we'll be raffling off $350 Hanford gift cards. Um, I'll be purchasing snacks and beverages to bring here for folks to have things to snack on. There has been um, a meeting with outside of this committee with our um, consultants um, filling out the agenda. It's still in progress, but I did share it. Um, and it's looking like they're gonna have three stations for participation. Um, and I asked that they come to our June meeting to get everyone here um, up to speed on exactly what their process is, because I don't, want to explain exactly what I think they're doing because I'm I think it's still kind of in formulation mm -hmm. but it sounds like it'll be for the interactive Did I anything to add on that? No, <laughs> I think I think we just saw the agenda for the first time today so I think I didn't even look but Yeah, and I'm I'm looking over and seeing now that there's a lot of comments on it. <laughs> so I think that things are still in flux with that um yeah, Oh, okay. Yeah. Um yeah, so I think that things are still changing, and I think, yeah, they're going to come to June and talk about it, and I really don't think I have anything. Were they talking about con con uh, concentrating the two uh, mapping activities in one uh, to make it simpler? And I think they got rid of simpler? one of them. I think so. That's what it, yeah, it sounded like. In, in, other, in other words, put everything. Don't, don't do the two activities in exactly the same sort of format to get, gather the same kind of data, combine it in one, basically. I that's think that... I think that they may have taken mapping out of, I just glanced at it today. Yeah, but I'm not sure. I think we'll get a full update on everything in yeah, June. Yeah, cool. okay. Sorry, Victoria, you, you had- Oh, um, I don't know, I mean, this maybe this is for next month, but when you guys were talking about the public works director, 
I was wondering, it seems like it would be a really great idea to send very specific invites to some key town people, emergency management, public works, um, I mean, anyone really, but those in particular, it seems like, because they have so much credibility, people always wanna talk about roads, those always rise to the top of the priority list. So I think that maybe we could have a discussion in June briefly about who else do we wanna really send specific targeted invites to. Nice idea. I have a feeling that Dennis will not have time to go to something like that in June. And also, as we are just starting to talk to people about what they want, I almost think that that might be better served at our next meeting in fall when we have a better prioritization, potentially having um, like public works and something else at that point after we've potentially had a discussion with them, like in a more one on one setting um, could mean more because I'm just kind of thinking about this meeting and I'm like well what would he do he's not a top some redis resident um you know he would just be there to answer questions and it might be confusing honestly for them because they won't have all the information on this process and project so I think that if we wanted to do that I'm almost wondering if the second meeting that we're going to do more prioritization of actions is that someone from the committee you know has like a one-on-one -on -one with if we decide that there's certain people that we want to invite has a one-on-one -on -one, says this is how you could help us could you come and something like that. Just my thought about it, just because yeah. I'm very aware of not wanting to over. Yeah, that, that him. makes sense. What about if, uh, I mean, would it be possible to get sort of, I don't want to say testimonials from them, but I feel like knowing people knowing that they're on board from the get go mm. really have, you know, can bring some credibility. Um, so, a testimonials is the wrong word, but um, maybe sure. statements or something for yeah. why this is important. Um, just a thought, a way to compromise on that. Yeah, that's a potential. Um, I mean, I can speak to that. We do discuss this project um, and I have the you know full support of manager's office uh, on this. And I know Dennis was at some an early kickoff meeting for this. Um, and I can speak to work that we're doing on Pleasant Point Road to um, get that properly elevated because it's flooding right now. Um, so we can talk about that if we want to. I guess, as I said, I'm really aware of not wanting to overburden him uh, particularly, and I would want to know explicitly like what we want. I guess as the planning director, I can speak to the town's support of this and the specific department head support of this because they we do have it. But if there's something specifically more that we want, or if you want to send me like an I'm email, I'd be happy. This. Yeah, no, that's okay. I, I'm yeah, saying yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. I think it's like that's what I would like be like, okay, yeah, we could use this specifically. Like then well, yes. Well, you know, I just know road projects come up a lot. So, you know, maybe it is just you, but you know, you could say, you know, I took I'm in constant communication with the public works director. Yeah. I know he's. Really I'm happy to add that into how these projects or whatever, something like that, which Actually, might be. A, I, I think Sky would carry a, a lot of credibility. Oh, sure, there. yeah, yeah, um, definitely. I also think Mark Waltz would carry a lot of credibility there. Yeah, get in there. Mm -hmm. Who was that? Town manager. Our town. Oh, manager. the new town manager. Yeah. Right. Uh, that we wouldn't have to have, you know, everybody, but oh, know, yeah, no, I mean, kind so of I a kickoff first meeting. Oh, by really Mark. Good. Yeah, he's a resident too. So he has, you yeah. know, more of a reason to be there. I'm just thinking if you're not a resident of Topsum at this early stage, it's kind of, um, but I can, I, we could also send out, um, if we think it would be a good idea, we could add me to the agenda to do like a five minute town update if we'd like to do that. I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to throw around my title. And I, I, do feel that we have the support of the department heads on this. Um, you know, uh, we've, the, we've, you know, since this project has been started, it is a priority for the town. We want to do it. We want to do it correctly. We want to make sure that people's voices are heard in this process. Um, and, you know, I think as Nick, ben, you know, they're happy to talk to them when they have the time and the ability to, you know, um, so I'm happy to speak to how we're trying to work on this from an administrative aspect if that would be good okay, is this good. at so, the july meeting yeah, yeah if we think that would be good i'm happy to do a five minute kind of where is the town administration at with this i think that would be extremely bad. yeah i think that makes them a lot of sense I think, the, yeah. I think the two projects that have been done recently um particularly the the, the foresight road no, i'm sorry um 
Pleasant Point Road thing is probably pretty new to most people. Mm -hmm. So having that say, look, we're dealing with this already. Mm -hmm. And then also the storm, the, uh, and I guess at the islands, uh, the storms replaced the mm -hmm. cross. Um, uh, oh, are you talking about Tedford? Not Tedford. Oh, no, well, that's also coming. That's also, yeah, that may be, maybe that one. I'm not okay. sure because that's new. I was just going to say that I go to all the meetings for yeah, those yeah. projects. I've been really involved with Pleasant Point um, yeah. and who we chose as a consultant and how we go about it. And I edited the RFP. Um, I'm not always as visibly part of those right. things, but um, if there's like big capital, like I helped select the contractor for Tedford Road as well. Like um, planning is usually involved with all big yeah, um, like construction five, five minutes just say look, yeah here are projects that are currently happening they're dealing we're dealing with climate change already so yep know, pleasant way. point is our big one on that yeah. tedford um i can speak to it's one's a little bit more up in the air um, yeah and okay. i've worked on it less but i'm thinking of the culvert um right out on um elm street um, oh the elm street culvert yeah um right at the end of pylons mm. um that yeah, I don't know as much about that one, yeah, but I could look into it. Project, but yeah, it's you know a major issue of like, oh wow, there's more water here than we've ever thought. And yeah. Okay. So, yeah. What I have been even planning to talk about. Sorry, but back can we, I, I just need to. I need to be home at six, and I need to ride my bike, so I'm just okay. kind of getting a little okay. worried about that. Fine. Okay. Do you want to chat afterwards? Um. So just for next meeting, we're definitely going to focus a lot on public outreach for the July meeting. Yeah. So um, do we have any volunteers for a new poster? <laughs> Someone with graphics experience, perhaps. Oh, wow. I mean, if not, I'm happy to do it, but I just, I'm not a graphic designer, so. I'm just thinking we take the same Canva <laughs> thing and just literally Okay, I can do that. If you wanna, if you wanna put together all the content and the ideas for graphics and the size, I can put it together in Canva. I have a, we have, the, I have the town Canva thing, um, and I'm pretty good at graphic design. I'm less limited for time. Uh, can I announce this now? We did hire a new planner for the planning department. Oh, um, yeah. He's starting next yeah. week, or no, he's starting this week actually due What's to benefits. Name? His name is Josh Franklin. Um, he has history as a landscape architect. Um, and um, I think he's gonna be really good. He's really uh, bubbly and like personable and we're really excited to have him. Um, so he's starting at the end of this week, obviously, He'll need time to get used to things, but I will have a little bit more time. So um, if someone wanted to like say, you know, this is all the content that's going to be on it. I'd like this graphic on this size. I can probably throw that together in Canva if that is. I would say just take the postcard you just made and delete the information about the survey. And okay. Just so you want just PR another poster? To bring you to our web page. That's just what I would Yeah, do. Like, I'll put it on my list. Um, it's always helpful to have a specific email saying, please do this, just so it's like if things are in my inbox, I remember to do it a lot easier. Um yeah. And if there's any, I mean, it's not a, I, I can update it a little bit too if you want to. It just um like making it from scratch is one thing versus just kind of putting things together is another. Um I'm going to draft um a letter i might throw it by sky first just for the heck of it and then we can workshop something to provide to you guys as a general outreach mm -hmm. letter when we because we've got these email addresses now yeah so just something that's i'm sure we like, won't need a lot of editing or anything sky but i just feel like it yeah no be please please show it to that me that in between here and there um is this for people to come to the July 30th? Yes. Yeah. 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 Start getting people involved. Um, and then I suspect I'll also write the press release and some, unless somebody else wants to do that. Um, I'll do that. How about that? I can so I'm hoping to get do some already. Facebook posts too. I just, okay. it's one of those things Victoria, I forget about. You know, but <laughs> if you could get me a draft yeah. and within two weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the press release, that would be great, and then I can take it for a week, and then I can turn it back out to everybody, and we'll review all of those elements at the next meeting for promotions, and then we'll also start the meeting with um, FB and um, not C Grant, but 
wherever Jessica. She was to, yes, Jessica, um, to discuss the, you know, the the July meeting. So we all get on that. Same I'm hoping to have it in an article for Times Record next, but would be really nice as well as a press release. We should also get the press release into the choir um, yes. by the fifteenth or something. This of June. June. Be great. Um, but. Yeah, I have, I spoke with Pam, we have space and we should have space in the July crier okay. um, on the town page for okay. this meeting. So um, well, if we use that little yep. thing, just take well, off oh, the... Oh, that's true. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. yeah we because she asked about June and at that time we didn't have anything. And we also thought that it was a bit too far in the future, quite honestly, sure. for an end of July meeting. So we were like, all right, I won't take June, but I will take July. So I had that conversation with her at the end of June. But the sooner I have that and can get it to her, so you're going to do that to the crier. You're going to send out press release. The, 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 I will give a, a graphic to Pam graphic. to put on the town page in the crier. Yeah. That's cool too. yeah. But if there's something else that's going out to the news, um, definitely just shoot it past me before it goes I out. I need a model for this because it's going to be more because I don't that, but I'll get that from Scott. I would have to search for one. I don't oh, know where one is. Okay, well. Um, <laughs> Well, the crier is going to need like what the fifteenth or something. Mm, probably, yeah, yeah. I think that's around one. So I think you only have like maybe ten days to get it to me. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if the. At any rate, that that may not be as important as getting it on the on the town page, but mm -hmm. you might. Mm -hmm. If we give him a good press release, he might put an article in if he has space, so it, it can't hurt. Who was this report? Does anybody know? Times Record. You didn't say his name. He didn't say it, I just didn't touch it. Yeah. Yeah. You said it to Glenn. So. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, all right, so I'm sorry because I do have to go, and there's no more public comment. Does anyone else have anything that they need to say on record? Otherwise, we can adjourn if there's a motion, then you can continue talking. <laughs> but I really, I, I actually have a contract with that. My answer six. I have a motion for a second. Okay. Second, all in favor. All right. Thank all right. you. I'm really sorry about that.